Thomas Atwood, Birmingham's first Member of Parliament. I wonder if he was a lover of curries. Nice recipe. It's from here where our curry adventure begins, as we aim to reveal all we need to know about some of the most famous and well-loved curries. The show will take us from the curry capital to the length and breadth of India, as we seek out the origins of the dish, as well as the spices used within it. Welcome from Birmingham to Bombay. Coming up in the show, we get hot and passionate with more colour than an artist's easel as we go head to head with two Rogan Josh recipes, a vegetarian scarlet paneer fit for a Mughal emperor, and we unearth something very yellow. So I've come to Saffron for that Anglo-Indian classic, Rogan Josh. Okay, chef, take us through. What have we got here? We've got a range of spices. You've got a dry garam masala, you've got coriander powder, you've got paprika powder, you've got turmeric powder, aniseed powder, there's a garam masala powder, chopped onion, ginger garlic paste, tomato paste, you've got chopped fresh coriander, you've got chili powder, you've got chopped tomatoes, you've got yogurt, you've got raw papaya grated, you've got oil and the lamb shank. Fantastic. What are we going to start with there first? First I'm going to uh, dry roast the spices, whole spices, which, which I'm going to grind it afterwards. Okay. Well, I've got my book and I'm writing down the full recipe and method as I need to replicate this dish over in India. Now, need to put the onions. What else is going in there? And I'm going to use this whole garam masala. Because it, I'm cooking the lamb, so it's better to put afterwards because it's, if it is long time in the oil, so it may get burnt. What have we got next? Uh, next, I'm going to use some ginger garlic paste. Okay. How, you, how have you made that? I've taken uh, the ratio of two is to one. It's two portion of garlic and one portion of ginger. And then you use some oil and put in a grinder and make a fine paste. Simple as that. Then go straight in. Straight in. Lovely. Probably I'm using half a tablespoon. I'm using the dry spices now. Okay. You're going to go straight in. Straight Shall in. Shall I bring the pan over? Sure. There you go. You've got some coriander powder. Coriander. Some touch of paprika to give it a more color. Lovely. Bit of turmeric powder. Touch of Kashmir red chili. Are they hot? Uh, they are medium, not very hot though. That goes back. Get it back. There you go. And I'm going to stir it. So how long does that need to cook? It needs probably, I should say, around five to six minutes. Yeah, it's almost ready. The spices are cooked. We can see here, that's the stage. You can see the spices leave the fat. So you can see the fat is floating. It's just starting to separate, isn't separate, it? Yeah. yeah. And the spices are cooked. Okay, what are we going to do with that? And after that, I'm using some beaten yogurt. Okay. And stir it nicely. Does that go straight in? Yes, straight okay. in. Okay, let's go for it. I'm going to put some beaten yogurt. Not too much, otherwise it will be sour. Mix it nicely. You bring that up to the boil? Yes, and probably I use a little bit of water. Yeah. And simmer it for probably five minutes. It looks nice, good consistency. I need to use the lamb shank now. Lamb shank in. Yeah. Lovely. And I use some water. Probably you need to cover it up. Quite a bit of water there. Yeah. Yes. And also some grated papaya that he helps to cook a bit faster. It's a natural tenderizer. Lovely. Back onto heat. That's going to cook for how long? That's probably one, one and one and a half hours. Brilliant. Whilst I've started my journey at Saffron, I thought I would choose another bright yellow spice to investigate in the form of turmeric, a spice that is used in so many Indian recipes around the world. But before the restaurants receive their ground turmeric, it all comes here to the largest spice importer in the UK. As well as curry blends, turmeric can be found in mustards, as well as pickles such as piccalilli, and has to go through a rigorous process of cleaning. In fact, 330 tonnes of turmeric is looked after here, and 30 of these 300 gram packs are filled per minute. We've seen the restaurants use it, we've seen it being processed, but I want to find out more about the history and the originations of turmeric. I'm off to India. I'm 
I'm in Bombay, now known as Mumbai, home to one of the world's busiest cities, home to some of the world's most richest people, home to some of the world's poorest people. It's also home to Bollywood, that make in the region of 1,000 movies per annum. But I've no time to catch a movie. Oh no, I'm off to Agra in search of an Indian Rogan Josh and find out more about turmeric. But first, I'm going to find one of the leading celebrity chefs in India. It's Sanjeev Kapoor. So I hope he's going to tell me a little bit about what to expect in the city of Agra. Well, Sanjeev, what can I expect to find in Agra? Oh, Agra, land of uh, Taj Mahal, uh, I think uh, uh, that's one place uh, which you have to go. But food there is stunning because Mughlai food, which is a nice uh, food uh, from kings, uh, is, is that's what you get. Though it's uh, Uttar Pradesh, but uh, uh, nice, rich uh, uh, food, uh, which we used to eat maybe four, 450 years ago, uh, it's still represented uh, very well there. Um, one of the best memories of Agra that I have is nice uh, lamb seek kebabs. Okay. I don't know where I ate them, but memory <laughs> is still fresh. Well, I'm looking for a Rogan Josh. Oh, actually Rogan Josh, uh, traditional Rogan Josh uh, comes from uh, Kashmir. So that's where you'd get, but now you get Rogan Josh uh, anywhere. But good meat dishes uh, yeah. you'd find there. A uh, lot of Muslim influence uh, that you'd find uh, in Agra. Agra. It's a three-hour train journey from Delhi. It's famous for its marble and its bejeweled trays. It's famous for its Rogan Josh. But above all, it's famous for this. The Taj Mahal is the jewel of Muslim art in India. The building work was completed in 1653 by Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in memory of his third wife, Mumtaz Mahal. It's now a UNESCO World Heritage Site and aptly forms the backdrop for my scarlet paneer recipe. I've got a stunning dish for you today and it's vegetarian and also it's quick and easy. Let me show you what we've got. We're going to start off with a little bit of ghee. Now you make that by taking a knob of butter, putting it into a saucepan, just warming it up very, very gently and what will happen, the fats will rise and the curds and whey and salts will sit at the bottom. Just strain that off, keeping and retaining that beautiful butter fat. That's basically your ghee and it'll go into a little solid block when it gets cold. Now put some ghee into the pan, it's getting nice and hot. The other ingredients I've got is this. We've got here one well, a couple of onions and a few cloves of garlic, all blitz and pureed together. You can probably see a little sandstorm of uh, ash coming from my barbecue right now. It's blowing a bit of a wind. Anyway, make sure your pan's nice and hot. Take a couple of dots. Look at that. You'll hear the sizzle. Wow, that's what we want. And we'll also get those lovely smells. Cook all the acidity out, making it nice and sweet. Ah, with the other ingredients we're going to start off with, the spices. We've got some cumin just here. Sprinkle the cumin into the onion, just a small amount. We've then got some chilli pepper, all the way from Birmingham. <laughs> it's like bringing coals to Newcastle. In goes the chilli powder. This is a scarlet curry. This is going to give it the heat as well as the colour. Mix that together. I'll we'll add a little bit more of that. Wow. The next item, we've got a few cloves. I'm going to put around about six to eight cloves in here. That will do nicely. You can grind them, but they will soften up as you go along. One of the best ways of actually testing a clove is floating it in water. If it sinks, it's going to be full of those lovely oils that you actually need. The next item we've got here, cinnamon, all ground, nice and fragrant. It's as simple as that. Mix them together. Get a stir, sweat out all those lovely aromats together. Look at that colour already. And the aromas, if only you could smell that, it is pretty good. Next item, poppy seeds. You can get them in different colours. These we've got some light poppy seeds. That's going to give it a nice little texture, as well as flavour, of course. To give it some crunchiness, I'm going for cashew nuts. You can use unsalted peanuts. Stick them in, scatter them around, and give it a mix. Smelling and looking pretty good. Once we get to this stage, and it's fairly fairly compact like that, you don't want it too sloppy, we can then take this item here, which is the main ingredient. We've got here paneer. It's made from buffalo's milk. You can also get it made from cow's milk. It's readily available in most stores these days. And I'm just going to quite simply place the pannier, well, from the pannier to this pan here. Boom, boom. Mix that together until we've got all that lovely colour and flavour and ingredients well blended. Sauce that around, heating it up as we go. Now, once you get to that point, 
you then take some yogurt. Now the yogurt in India is quite, it's like cottage cheese really, and it's rather lumpy. Okay, unlike the, a lot of the processed stuff you actually get in most uh, stores these days. And all you need to do if you do get it lumpy is just give it a whisk, beat it all up, and it makes it far more smoother. And strangely enough, it's only been around for about 90 years in, uh, in Europe, whereas in India, yogurt's been around for something like 6,000 years. Basically, they take milk, they add a little bit of culture to it, we've got lactobacillus, bifus, and we've also got streptococcus, which turns it, turns it into a lovely acidity and a lovely flavour, and it's all good, beneficial, I should say, bacteria. Now bring that together, bring it up to the sim of the boil. You might find it starts to crack just a little bit. Don't worry about that, it's all part of the beauty of this dish. While that's cooking, while that's heating up, I've got a little bit more ghee into this pan, to which I'm gonna take just a selection of blanched vegetables. Basically any selection of vegetables you want, give it lots of color, lots of flavor, plunge it into boiling water for a couple of minutes, and then quite simply reheat them whenever you're ready into a pan of ghee. A little pinch of salt. I'm not gonna spice this particular dish. You can actually mix them all together, but I want to serve them separately so you can actually get the full colors mixing in with this lovely scarlet paneer dish. Look at that. And it doesn't take long to cook. This is fast food at its best. Give that a stare. Now then, same as say, it's really simple to do. All we need to do now is add another ingredient. And I've got some tomato. I've taken the tomatoes, just put them in a food processor, blitz them down, and you've got this lovely red pulp that's going to give it flavour, it's going to give it colour. There we go, mix that together and it doesn't take long to heat up also. And finally, I told you it was quick and simple, we've got a little bit of cream. Double cream is best, just give this dish a little squirt of cream. Once again, mix that together. I'm going to season it right at the last minute. I advise you to taste it first, you might not need any seasoning. Right, last minute I've got here a few chilli peppers which have been soaked in water and then just blitz into a puree. Now obviously you've got to be careful how hot this is, but we're in India, so um, it's probably a little bit spicier than what you'd make it at home. <laughs> Give it a good mix together. That folks is just about it. I'm going to take my bowl, bring this over here, and scoop some of this lovely paneer with its sauce. Look at that. Oh, delicious. Then I'm going to take some of those vegetables, then cooking off nicely in that butter, take the veg and just scatter the veg all the way around. It's rustic, it's tasty. It's fragrant, you know, it's everything you want in a very simple dish. Finish it off with a little bit of freshly chopped coriander over the top and you can even drizzle a little bit more cream. And folks, you know, it's a simple, fresh, lovely, stunning dish. That is my paneer with a wonderful scarlet curry sauce. Coming up, I'm rooting around the undergrowth to dig up our star spice, turmeric, and we're cooking God's Rogan Josh. So I've come to Agra, home of the Taj Mahal, to do a comparison of the famous curry Rogan Josh. But whilst that chap is certainly on the way up, I am going down in search of our star spice, turmeric. Turmeric. Got its name from the French, turmerite, which basically means deserved earth. It's a rhizome, an underground swollen stem, and it's related to the ginger. In fact, it can be prepared like ginger, but it's a little bit more harder to grate. In fact, as you see, boiled, and dried in the sun to bring that lovely deep yellow colour. And it's used in most of the curry preparations that we find in the market today. It brings out that lovely, warm, aromatic, earthy flavour. That's what it looks like. Beautiful. It's got great health benefits, both internally and, of course, externally as well. In Ayurvedic treatments, turmeric is used as a blood purifier and has antiseptic effects. It's also used as a beauty aid and to help improve the complexion. From the spa retreat 
to Agra and the Trident Hotel where they grow an abundance of stunning organic fruit and veg throughout the year, from lettuce and carrots to rather large gooseberries. We need to find out if the hotel chef will be using any of these ingredients in his Rogan Josh. Now everybody knows that the executive chef of a hotel and restaurant is God. Now here today is no exception because we have a real God. His name is Narinda, which is God in Sanskrit. Narinda, hello. Good afternoon. Welcome to Chitayan Agra. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank now you then, much. you are king. You're god of the Rogan Josh. Oh, thank you very much. Right. Tell us what's in your ingredients. So Rogan Josh is goes. Rogan Josh is the uh, very speciality from the Kashmir, and it goes lots of uh, uh, made with the Kashmiri chilies basically. This is the Kashmiri chilies. This is the Kashmiri chilies. Yep. It has a very good uh, spice flavor. So if it's Kashmiri, what's he got to do with Agra? Agra people that loves to the spice food. The lamb is cooked with the lots of oil and the spices, so people like So Agra people how likes. long has that dish been in Agra? Mughal time, this is from Mughal time. So we're going back hundreds and hundreds yes, of years? Yes, hundreds of years. Brilliant. Let's get cooking. We should start with the first, we put the ghee. Okay. A little bit of ghee. Yes, this is a very, very rich and it gives lots of fat in this. Which is basically like a clarified butter with the curds and whey yes. removed. Okay. So we we'll start with the, all the, uh, the cloves. The cloves. We'll start the a little bit of mace. Mace. Yeah. The outer shell of the nutmeg. Yeah. There's the black pepper. There's the black cardamom. Okay. Oh, that's going in. Hold you, not crushing yes. it. Yes. Yes. Then this green cardamom. And put the little one or two dry chilies. Lovely. Now it's starting to pop. You can yes. see them just starting yes, to pop in there. Yes. Start crackling. There's the one. Is the Lovely. cinnamon stick and of bay leaves. And a couple of bay leaves. Now yes. this is where you always wish it was smelly vision because yes. out here we're out outdoors and we're getting the aromas from all those spices crackling and popping and all those essential oils just coming out. Mm, yeah, it smells good. And let some slice ah. onion. Onion in there, yeah. Put in this flavour. We're not going to brown them? They're going to be right? Yes, yeah. it's a little light golden brown. So it's a little getting brown. Then we'll put the marinated lamb, it's marinated with ginger garlic, chilies yeah. and salt. Ginger garlic, chilies and salt. And salt. How long you marinate it for? It's not for four hours. Four hours only. Okay. Yeah. You feel the smell of oh. chilies. Same as I wish the wind was blowing this direction. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting a little whiffs of it, but if I was standing that side, it'd be no, quite a better feel, thing. You can feel, you can feel. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes. That's good. Now, this is lamb, little, that starts sticking from yep. the pan. It means little lamb is seared. So basically, that's a nice little tip. So yes, once it starts yes. to stick, that's, yes. that's enough. It's caramelized enough. Yeah. Okay, good. That Next ingredient, chef. We'll put the coriander powder. Coriander powder. Then we've got ginger, ginger powder. Ginger powder. Then we'll put the fennel powder. Then the fennel powder. Okay. Then we'll put the little sliced ginger as well. Sliced ginger. Yes. So this is the main flavor of Rogan Jewel. Okay. There's a ginger you and fennel. It's basically. your dish, yeah. I'll put it. Lovely. You know, there's something quite special about standing here in this garden with those aromas. You know, I, get, I get so excited about that. <laughs> Small things, I know, pleases me, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, if Little getting started, then put the chilli paste. Right then, the chilli paste, what have we got in there? Chilli paste are the, the same chilies. Yep. We boiled it and we make paste out of this. Okay. So so does the, the paste. whole lot go in the seeds as well? Yes, seeds, everything, everything. Now the Kashmiri chilies are not majorly hot, are they? No, not very hot, but it gives fantastic colour to the dish. That's part of the dish, isn't it, Rogan? Yes. It's about the colour. This colour. And this. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then put a little ginger garlic. Ginger and garlic mix. Yes. Ginger oh, garlic what? paste. Also, is it 50-50 ginger it's garlic? It is 60-40. 60-40. Okay. Yes. Okay. Ginger, 40 garlic. Okay. This is a stunning colour. It's a stunning aroma. It's just, it's getting my salivary glands going. <laughs> just want to share that with you, as though you wanted to know. <laughs> and at last, we put the, this is the just whipped yogurt. Why have you whipped it? What's the point of that? 
otherwise it gives chunks and okay. this is a texture will not be very good okay so that's why I, I have actually noticed the difference between the, um, the, the type of um, yogurt that you use over here it yes. can be quite lumpy whereas uh, yes. back in Europe it's a lot smoother it's already sort of yes, processed yes, yes, and whipped yes, for yes. us I suppose look at the color little changing that is vibrant isn't it it's lovely so look at the oil this oil is coming oil out, out yeah. this is called Rogan okay so that's the name is Rogan Josh and the Josh is the color Josh the is the of course energy passion you can say a little bit of passion in the garden go, 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 go. <laughs> <laughs> I will put little water water okay can you stock yes stock be uh, used or is no or just water just water it will take just four hours to cook four hours to cook yes I cannot wait to taste it Whilst the hotel guests enjoy their buffet, little do they know the pressure bubbling away behind the scenes. For earlier on, I made Suda's recipe that he showed us back in Birmingham. And it's now time to compare the two. Proof in the puddings, always in the eating. And I've got Vishal, the general manager, and Narinda, the executive chef, to taste these two dishes. Not forgetting, this is the Rogan Josh Challenge. We've got this one from Birmingham, uh, from Saffron Restaurant. And we've got this one from the Trident in Agra. Let's see if there is a difference between these two Rogan Joshes. Please, tuck in. We're going to start with this one first? Yes, yes, yes. Go on, grab a spoon yeah, and fork. Let's, yeah. let's have a taste. Now, we've stuck to the recipe that, uh, that was given by Suda. Oh, yeah, there's some heat coming out the back. Yep. What other things are you getting there? So the difference is this, in Birmingham recipe, they use the papaya, but we don't use papaya, because papaya makes the uh, softness, gives softness to the meat, but we are, we are not using any papaya. So it cooks own, it takes at least four to five hours. Slow, it is the slow, slow cooking. Yeah. So let, let's just have a look and have a, have a quick taste of the meat, and let's just do some cap comparisons there. There's not much dissimilar similar taste. Are there, there is there is similarity in the color, of course. Mm. Um, taste, yes, but I could definitely see the difference in the cut of yeah. the meat that we see. The look uh, is definitely more presentation-wise that they have. Uh, this looks a little nice. Yeah. But there's too much of bone in it. Right. We what we do is we just take one piece where the bone is on the. Uh, uh, there's meat on the bone, yep. but the rest is the boti, which is the boneless part of the meat. Right. So you actually get to get a lot of meat. Here it is around the bone. So presentation-wise, maybe this looks uh, different. Taste-wise, they are very similar, and both are giving you an aftertaste. The heat is there, and the spices oh, are coming out. It's warming up quite nicely. I think the other thing is, over in, uh, in the UK, we've got bigger legs. Okay. <laughs> you've, got, you've got thinner legs here, so you've got three as opposed to just the one. We do normally present just the one in the UK, and that would be quite a robust meal. But yes, yeah, similarity in taste, and the papaya is the difference for yes. breaking down and tenderizing the meat. Maybe, maybe you're short of time there and you need to cook quickly, so the papaya is used. But we have enough time and we give the heat and... Uh, you do it slowly and, and gently. Slowly and then the taste comes. <laughs> well, I think they're both great, and I thank you so much for, for taking part in this and doing the Rogan Josh Challenge. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been wonderful to come to the home of the Taj Mahal and the Agra Fort, but it's also been wonderful to come to the home of the Rogan Josh. I've certainly had a great journey. I hope you've enjoyed it too. I'll see you next time.